happening right here, right now. Call it out to all every group. We gon' make it all happen right here, right now. Call it out to all every group. We gon' make it all happen right here, right now. Call it out to all every group. We gon' make it all happen right here, right now. Hey everybody, welcome to the show. It's a exciting week for us. Actually, we had a, a guest cancellation. And uh, I think it's actually going to end up being a little bit of a blessing. Uh, we're really excited to get this guest. I won't name him yet because I don't know when we'll get him rescheduled. Yeah, uh, if he falls through, it'll make us look funny. <laughs> <laughs> but he's he's going to be a good one. I, I actually am really excited for some of the guys that we've got coming up. Uh, we've got some really exciting guests that I think everyone will get a lot out of. So I'm looking forward to it. But um, as a happy byproduct of not having a guest this week, uh, Mike and I have been able to sit down and visit for a little bit and get caught up. Uh, these last few weeks uh, for both of us have, have been quite hectic, uh, a lot of traveling and moving around. In fact, I'm on the eve of, of more travel. Yeah. And uh, so we've just got a ton going on and uh, we haven't really had a chance to just sit down and kind of BS, you know, because these last several episodes have been with guests. And yeah, things we've, and, we've had some awesome interviews. Um, yeah, it's been really cool. Yeah. We've met some awesome people over the last few weeks. And if you've been listening to the, the show uh, over the last month or two, well, really, it's been going on for months now. But if you've been listening in, in recent history, we've had some great guests who have been just awesome. Um, and uh, I'm super pleased with uh, the way the show is progressing. But as a result, you know, Mike's been coming into town or I've been coming up to uh, Pocatello or wherever he happens to be at the moment. And uh, we're flying in, we're doing the show, and then we're flying back out. <laughs> yeah, we, we haven't had any really downtime so, in yeah, a month now. Yeah, and there just there hasn't been any time to just sit and kind of visit about what's going on. And uh, so anyway, so we wanted to take advantage of this opportunity uh, where we've got just kind of a moment together where we'd come together to do a show and, and now it's not happening. So we're, uh, we're going to just do it together and that will be uh, super cool, I think. Yeah. So, so Mike, why don't you uh, kick it off? <laughs> I mean, okay. I see you've got a, a list of notes here. There's a bunch of stuff going on, and uh, and uh, and then yeah, you go ahead and start, and we'll circle back to my list, which is much shorter than yours. I guess. Um, so, this week I've been on the road uh, since the last episode. Uh, yeah, really, since we recorded that last show, I think you left the next day or whatever. Yeah. So that was with a homeboy from Vendetta Red, right? Oh yeah, yeah Zach yeah. Davidson. Yeah, they're all blurring together. In my head. <laughs> I couldn't remember who was last. Yeah, and so I think after that show, maybe the next day or something, you split to Seattle. Yeah, I went to. Well, actually, I played in Pocatello Thursday night, um, and uh, it was kind of fun. I mean, it, the Thursday nights I do music videos, and uh, they're starting to get busier, which is good. For a while there, they were kind of piddling off, but. Things have uh, been coming around. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, Pocatello. I mean, you, of course, this is a super inside conversation, but yeah. <laughs> but Pocatello is such a weird market because there's a, a university here, and so on its face, you would think, oh, you know, what a great town for bars and all this stuff, you know, because there's all these active stuff. nightlife, lots of students, yeah, lots of you know, it's, it's, it's funny. a big college. Yeah, because there's know, just not... there's no reason for it not to be a hopping city. But yeah. um, as long as I can remember, all the way back to when I was a kid and trying to go to concerts and things like that when I was young. I mean, like, there's just nothing happening here. And when stuff does happen, nobody supports it. It's, yeah. it's really difficult to pull stuff off in Pocatello. And I, I don't know why, but something to do with the makeup of the city. Well, that kind of led to my downfall in promoting, too. Like, I didn't realize the niche of... You yeah, know, the way Pocatello works. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, even if you bring big names to Pocatello, it's still hard to move tickets. I yep. mean, it's just it's difficult. Yeah, I don't know. Well, so. I mean, the the bands like the, you know, the Corn and the because um, they were here last summer. That's a, they they did fairly well. And then like you you got your uh, '80s butt rock bands seem to do really well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, there's a bunch of that. I think I saw En Vogue is coming to the. Uh, oh, nice. Fort Hall uh, <laughs> Event Center. So um, that'll be cool. But Yeah, so uh, after that, um, you know, I, I normally play at the Brown Lantern on the last Friday of the month, and the Brown Lantern's in Anacortes, Washington. And what I found is that if I play in Idaho and then drive overnight to play at the Brown, I'm too tired to enjoy it because I'll, I'll get there and I'll get like two hours of sleep, and then I 
you know, all I'm thinking yeah. about the whole time is just, just going to bed. Going to bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hard to get out there and rage if you're uh, not sleeping. Yeah, so I worked out a deal with the um, the guy that books me at the Brown Lantern to uh, it, it give me a day of you know drive time in between, so I can play on Thursday night here, and then they're booking me on Saturdays more at the Brown Lantern, which is good because uh, I was able to drive straight overnight to Seattle for a whole nother reason. <laughs> I, uh, I drove, uh, straight to Seattle and, um, caught a band called Brass Monkey. Um, uh, we talked about them a while ago. Uh, my, my yeah. buddy Bruce. Yeah. Just to kind of refresh. So back in the day, Mike and I used to run concerts and things in Arizona. Back then there was a band called Simplify who later evolved to be called Vaden. Yeah. And the drummer for Vaden is this guy, Bruce. And now Bruce is in Brass Monkey. Well, and, and the thing was, is like, I had no clue he was in Seattle. Like, I was in Seattle for eight years, and I, he was there for three or four of them. And I had no clue. And yeah, it's uh, funny how small the world is, you know? Yeah. Um, so recently, I, I kind of reached back to try and, you know, make some connections again with the people I used to work with in Phoenix and found out that he was in Seattle and he was playing in this group called Brass Monkey. And, so, uh, and Brass Monkey, uh, for those who didn't catch it before, is a uh, Beastie Boys tribute, right? Yes. And holy cow, they uh, they they can rock a show. Like, I, I I was a little skeptical at first, to be honest with you. I was like, well, it seems like a weird one to cover. I mean, really. I mean, you know, there's all the, the Led Zeppelin covers and the, you know, Pearl Jam cover bands and things like that, which I, I guess, you know, because you can get a guy, a group of guitars together or whatever, and you can make a band. But yeah, uh, uh, BC Boys is not maybe number one on my list for who would be the most covered band. <laughs> yeah, but they did a good job with it, and, and that's the difference. Is I I think that you know like, I mean they had the the MCs, they had the DJ, they had a full drummer, they had a guitar player, they had a bass player, and I mean the, gar the guitar player would go off on solos and and just it. He was playing the the strings with his teeth at one point. <laughs> you know, like I mean it was it was a really good show and um i mean it was it was funny the venue they were playing in was hilarious it, it, it reminded me of um oh uh, what venue was it um clubhouse down in phoenix oh, okay you know how the phoenix was weird because they would have all ages venues with alcohol in it and they only the thing that would separate the all ages with the alcohol was literally a barricade uh, that the do not cross this line tape. Yeah. And yeah, that's all I, you had to have in between it. And that was weird to yeah, me. I had been in a few bars in Phoenix, too, that, you know, would put up like chain link fence or whatever, you know, between them. Uh, I wish I could remember the name of one of them. It was Fish something, Fish House Pub, or something, something to do with the fish. And then, uh, and then the other place uh, down there that's my favorite name for a bar of all time is uh, Neckbeards. Oh yeah, I forgot so, about Neckbeards. <laughs> so so that was that was a pretty. I think cool it venue. was an all ages place. Yeah, too, it was maybe. all ages. So, but uh, but anyway, so you got a chance to see Brass Monkey. Now I haven't seen them, um, but Mike sent a video over to me, and you know, I mean, as good as an iPhone can capture it, it was pretty good. Um, well, it wasn't. It, I think they're they they need to be playing in a, in bigger venues. They they were in the the venue was. I mean, it was good, but it wasn't. I mean, like it was the. It, it felt like I was in Detroit watching. You know, <laughs> and uh, I modern mean, day Detroit. They had the VIP rooms on the side with the velvet rope, and it was just the bars were laid out funky. It just was. It was the weirdest kind of environment to see them, but. When they went on, it, it packed out more, and it was a, a decent night. I just think they're victims of playing in in the wrong venue. Like, I would love to get them down in like Jazz Bones in Tacoma or something like that. Yeah, I think they would. Just well, and I would say, their... you know, having not seen them or anything, I mean, I will say Bruce is one of the maybe the best drummers I've ever known. I mean, and I've known some really good ones, but he's he's very technical. He's a very good player. Yeah. He's, and uh, and so if he's lending himself to this band, they've got they've got to be good. Well, that's the thing is, I like, he also plays in another band called Alki Jones, and they're playing at the Brown Lantern on the 14th, um, it, which is cool because I was, I was talking to the guy that does the booking there, trying to get him to get him up there because they'd be a good fit for that venue. And... Uh, it's. I just know that you know if if Bruce is in a band, it's going to be a good band, 
And I, I also know if like, you know, certain, you know, Curtis, uh, the lead singer from Vaden, if he's in a band, it's going to be a good band. You know, it's like yep. you can just usually tell who the musicians are and, and, and who's got the talent. And if they're in, in a group, it's going to be a good group because they're not going to lend themselves their, you know, their talent to, you know, half ass shit, you know, right. which is cool. Yeah, for sure. So anyway, just to circle back, the uh, the fish-related bar I- in Arizona was called the Big Fish Pub. <laughs> so that's exactly what fish, I said. Yeah, big. Um, yeah. However, they're out of business. They went oh. out of business in 2014. That's so but, uh, but they they used to separate the all ages from the uh, 21 and up with a chain link fence down the middle. Well, of the that's room. better than the, the clubhouse because the clubhouse, literally, you could buy a drink and just walk over and hand it to it. Yeah, kid, it was really weird, know? though, because they would sort of put up the fence like perpendicular to the stage. So the stage would be split. So the half of the all ages. Just, yeah, so it, half of the crowd could be all ages, uh, half could be twenty one up. So if you're standing in front of the stage, you know half of you can be uh, twenty one up. It's kind of an interesting thing. I'd never seen it like that anywhere else. Yeah, it, the clubhouse was was strange like that too because they had to have it set up funny to get access to the restrooms. So they like if you weren't paying attention, a kid could just walk kind of through the restroom area and get into the back and, and get in. Yeah. But got to love weird alcohol rule laws. Yeah. Uh, and the, and the thing that was weird about Phoenix as well is if you go into like, um, the marquee theater, for example, capacity's higher. And so they get away with it. They don't have to have the barricade because they have a higher capacity. They just can have a wristband. And if you have a wristband, you can drink. And if you don't, you can't. Yeah. It's weird. So, yeah. Can't keep up with everything. So while you were up there, though, so you met with or you saw Brass Monkey on Friday night, but then you played Saturday at the Brown Lantern, right? Yeah. And that was an awesome show. Like it was one of those shows that um, keep me in the game. You know, right. it 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 made up for the last three or four months of just why am I doing this? <laughs> <laughs> like I had a, a whole group of uh, girls that came out and then were singing along with every word dancing in front of me the whole time uh the it started off a little slower and uh slowly picked up and as it picked up it just didn't stop it went from like you know a good group of people just jamming to, at the tables having fun drinking to a whole packed dance floor and I ended the night with like Bohemian Rhapsody and White Snake and everyone was, it was it was great like, everybody going nuts yeah um, got to kick it with some good friends uh, Tady came out John and and Chris and um, it's kind of fun I get there I get into town and I I just park the car and I walk around and make the rounds and stopped at like the Union Tavern and and uh, got some work done there and while kicking it watching the march madness with chris and it's fun to just go and link up with everyone again yeah well and it's an interesting place i mean you know anacortis is so small i imagine not everyone's been there but anacortis is is this cool little like old fishing village yeah and uh you know it's not big it's very small town vibe and stuff like the main industry there is uh ship repair like they'll they'll pull the ferries in from you know washington state ferries and they'll do repairs on them and uh uh, they make giant tugboats there and uh, huge marinas. Uh, I mean, you got Cap Santa Marina. You got all the millionaires, all the rich people have their boats parked there. And then they come up and then they go out sailing in the San Juans for the weekend. So you have a very diverse group of people that come into town. And all the staff, all the people that, you know, the that are in industry, like the bartenders, the chefs, the cooks and everything, all live in town. And it's like this network of just really awesome people. So when I come into town, I'm like, I'm kicking it with the cooks for the, you know, the big restaurants in town that are popular and I'm hanging out at their house, eating yeah. with them. you know, it's fun, you know, it's. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely one of the benefits of, of a small town, uh, you know, if you're into that sort of scene. The the downside is, so I, we're recording this in Pocatello right now. Um, I'm getting ready to head back to Salt Lake and ultimately to L.A., then over to New York. And uh, so we wanted to do this show before I left town. And uh, it was funny because I was talking to a, a former client of mine at Starbucks yesterday and uh, he was like, oh, you know, I'd heard that your wife had had some medical problems and she had uh, been in the hospital like last August or something. 
And uh, I was like, oh yeah, geez, God, you know, how do you how do you know about that or whatever? And he's like, I oh, listen to your podcast. Yeah, no, <laughs> no. I wish it was that. Yeah. Uh, no, he was like, no, you know, so and so over the insurance company said something. And it was like, and I was like, I mean, kind of taken back because I was like, what are you, what are you doing? Whatever I mean, you're the insurance company, con- you know, yeah, you're, yeah, you're not supposed to be saying anything. Yeah. I mean, but it, it's just small town, yeah. you know. I mean, word travels fast and well, stuff gets and, around. And it's, and, it's funny because like I'll go back to you know like. Anacortis or whatever and you know something happened someone got laid off da 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 and it's like it, it it's yeah, small it's, town bullshit I mean, that you deal everybody's with everybody's business yeah. well and, and it cuts both ways right it can be really great and if you like I mean you know even though I don't live in Pocatello anymore like when I come back it's still a little like home and you know I mean it's cool to run into people you know around town and hey, stuff what's you know up? and yeah. Pocatello is not that small I mean relative to small towns but yeah, it, but it's the people still that, kind of that way it, it's a larger town but it's literally cut in half you know you got half that are religious and half that aren't yeah. and the half that aren't stick to each other and hang out and do stuff and the half that do that are they do their thing yeah well and like you know so but i lived here through high school so everybody i went to high school with still you know a lot of them still live here and uh and so it's kind of fun to come here and i don't know it's like getting a a hug from your community every time you stop by so i mean it's kind of cool uh, you know, I'm glad we don't live here anymore, and I'm stoked to, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually to not have uh, that, that some of those. Point where I'm like, uh, it's a little too small for me. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm glad not to have some of those small town problems, but I do miss being able to, you know, go over to Texas Roadhouse and run into a couple people yeah, I know. Yeah, that's, that's kind of cool. So, uh, so anyway, so to wrap up your uh, Seattle trip, it's funny because. Uh, you did a bunch of stuff or or you did your show at the Brown Lantern. You hung out on Sunday and then on Monday, uh, we were supposed to do this interview, the, the one that we're doing this show. And well, I, I was going to hang out, um, in Anacortes and drive down on Monday, but I thought about it and I'm like, well, Monday is traffic going through Tacoma and all that stuff. So I left on Sunday so I could avoid the traffic, but then I got stuck in Easter traffic. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I left early, didn't kick it with any friends like I was planning on and, uh, got down to Kelso, Washington, which is South of, um, Tacoma, but, uh, North of Portland. And so I was able to, I pulled off over there and, uh, they got like a, a mall and a, Starbucks and a Denny's and all this other stuff all within like a block. And so I went and watched Black Panther and then did some work at Starbucks for a little while and did some Mm -hmm. more work at uh, um, Denny's for a little while and crashed in the car, got up and drove to Portland the next morning and was waiting to, I was going to start prepping for the interview. Yeah. (laughs) Well, and it's so unfortunate, right? So it just worked out. This guy we were going to interview is based in Portland. And uh, so it just worked out. You know, Mike was in the Northwest already, and he could easily zip down to Portland. Well, quote, unquote, easily. Well, I mean, it's e- easy you know, for me is not easy for other people. Right. Three well, hour drive for me is nothing. Yeah, I was going to say it's know. a three, three and a half hour drive out of the way. And uh, but, you know, we felt like for this particular guy, it was worth making the trip and trying to do it in person. And so, of course, Mike cancels plans and moves everything around so that he can get down to Portland. And then the interview ended up not happening. Well, and, and it was it's fine. It didn't end up happening. I um, It ended up making it where I could get back to Pocatello sooner uh, because I, I had initially I was going to do the interview, stay in Portland, edit everything, get it all done. And then that night drive back up to Anacortes because I have a, a wedding that I'm DJing on the 14th for... Uh, James and and Lacey, their uh, Lacey's brothers getting married, and they're uh, some friends of mine. Uh, they actually used to own a restaurant called Juicy Dog, Ooh. and uh, so I was going to leave my truck parked at their house, fly back to Idaho for a week and a half, and then fly back to Seattle and uh, um, just you know take a shuttle up, grab the truck, and go do the wedding. But since I had an extra day and a half, now that the meeting canceled i ended up just driving back to pocatello i cashed in my flight uh just as a credit kind of thing and so i can use it at a later date and then um yeah so it was really no yeah, no it, harm it worked out good i got, I got a full day of like uh development work done yesterday because i was in town and i wasn't waiting to catch an airplane yeah so so yeah so it all worked out it's unfortunate the interview didn't work out and we will get it rescheduled and uh, and do it at a later date because i think it'll be really cool to to have this guy yeah i'm 
I'm super excited for that one. Um, so yeah, it'll be a good interview. Yeah, it'll be great. So maybe in the next couple of weeks, we'll get something lined up with him and uh, and get him going. Anyway, so back to uh, to me or back to this part of the country anyway. Yeah. Um, at long last, uh, we, we've been talking about this for maybe a year. Well, almost a year on this show and, uh, you know, at least a year or two before. Uh, this show came to be uh, about relaunching my old clothing company, Restless. Yep. If you guys haven't noticed uh, on our cover art, you've been seeing the Restless logo up there as a... Yeah. So, yeah. and uh, and basically that was sort of a, a little bit of a precursor to launch. But uh, at this point, we are back live and in operation. Yeah. Uh, which is kind of exciting. So back in the day, Restless was more of like a uh, a, a mixed martial arts brand or an extreme sports brand. Well, that's just kind of how um, it shoot into. That yeah. Looks. We had started sort of, uh, the, well, we started the company and sort of had come up, at, you know, about the same time frame as the, the tap outs of the world. And uh, we rolled out the brand and we just caught fire with MMA and stuff like that. So we sort of chased that down and uh, and sort of ended up becoming more of an MMA brand. However, the brand itself was actually meant to be kind of a streetwear brand, kind of just, you know, restless general. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, The idea was, you know, with this concept of being restless, you know, whether it's restless, you know, I've got to get out and go do something. I've got to get up to no good. I've got to, you know, whatever it is, whatever your restless is. So anyway, that was sort of what it was supposed to be, but we had turned into kind of an MMA brand and, you know, and that suited us just fine back then. I mean, we did a lot of really cool events and we did a lot of great things. And so I think it was, uh, all worthwhile, but, uh, but we've decided now, uh, to relaunch the brand sort of more true to our roots, get back to the, the streetwear brand that it was kind of meant to be. And uh, I'm excited to say that we're uh, we're live. We've yeah. rolled it back out. Hey, you've actually uh, got a hat over there that's <laughs> badass, and um, yeah, I've so, seen some of the shirts, and you've t- you've posted a few photos of them, and um, I'm I'm really liking the way it's going. Yeah, it's really cool. And so we relaunched the line, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about that. Um, you know, obviously it's really competitive, uh, space, you know, I mean, there's a streetwear brands are kind of a dime a dozen, um, you know, and so it's a little bit of a vanity project to do this anyway, because, you know, unfortunately, at least not at this point, I can't invest full time into yeah. it. It's kind of a side thing, but I always felt that restless was a really great brand name. I really liked the idea behind restless. I mean, as somebody who himself is restless, <laughs> and never stops moving. Um, you know, it's always a brand name that resonated with me. So I felt like it was kind of a waste to not be doing something with it. Well, and the thing is, is I, um, uh, you look at like the nightlife life culture, you know, like the DJs, the producers, the people who are in bands, um, you know, touring, doing all that, like Ryan Caraveo and, and DJ Vega the other week. I, I think those people are the epitome of who would support and be good, with the restless brand because it makes it it's we're restless. We're always working on the next thing. We're always trying to do something to get better. And, and, uh, that, that's kind of why I really enjoyed it and I'm excited for it to come back. Yeah, because well, and, and like you said, to your point, I mean, it was a, it fit well with MMA because those guys that are out, you know, in the gym every day trying to, you know, build a career of, as a fighter. I mean, you don't get more restless than those guys. And so, the brand really resonated with that crowd. Um, me, you know, as you are, are very familiar with uh, from listening to the show, I mean, Mike and I have always been sort of around the music business and things like that. Obviously, this restlessness is common in, in people in that yep. business. You know, so I mean, so it's something that's just been near and dear to my heart for a long time. And, you know, we ended up uh, sort of shuttering the, the business or at least temporarily taking it down a few years ago. Uh, I had had a partner in the business and he was no longer able to be a part of it. And, uh, so we tried bringing in a, a new partner who I think was the right dude for it. Like he had the right attitude and the right, uh, circle of friends and all that kind of stuff. But he just, he's a busy guy too. And he just, he's he, busy he, and you he, had just moved from the yeah, area and it, it was just, just a, yeah, a combination of things and it yeah. just, so it didn't work out to really keep it going. And now uh, I'm just doing it myself. I don't have any partners at this time. Uh, although we're, you know, always open to the right guy or gal. 
And uh, and so we're we're hoping to really launch this brand hard and get back out into the streets where we were. And uh, and I think so far we're we're off to a good start. Yeah, your, um, your product line looks awesome. Yeah, and it's really cool. So we just did our our first drop for the spring, um, and we're still working on some things like what is our model? You know, do we do seasonal launches or do we just launch new shirts as we come up with new shirts? Or um, you know, you should do like a. a line that's similar to like what um oh anderson does with his is it anderson that does the prints yeah yeah um, uh, anderson blue is yeah. what he's talking about he does the sneaker you should prints. do like limited runs to where you know you do a design and you have a hundred copies of it and when it's sold out it's sold out i just yeah. think that's cool yeah we've talked about stuff like that and there's another brand that i i really like that's called humbly made and what Humbly Made does is they sort of crowdsource shirts. So they'll put up a design or whatever. And if people like it, then you buy it. You basically pre-order it. And if they get enough orders, then they print it. So if what they happens if they, they don't. don't get enough orders? They, they refund just, the money? Yeah, they just refund you. And huh. you know, no harm, no foul. Interesting. So now I don't think that's a good fit for Restless. I think Restless is, you know, in order to be a true streetwear brand, we, we just are going to be our brand and we're going to roll stuff out. But uh, we will probably toy a little bit with uh, whether we just roll out a block of shirts every season, you know, like because right now the plan is to do a second drop for the spring here in the next week or two. Uh, I don't want to commit to a week or two, maybe yeah. the next month or so. <laughs> soon. And uh, yeah, soon. And uh, before the end of summer. Yeah. So anyway, so the the second spring launch will hopefully be coming in the not too distant future. And, uh, you know, and drop one is already doing really well. So we're glad to kind of be back at it. I mean, clearly there's a, a an interest or something in this uh, in this brand. And so we're glad to see that it's picking up steam again. Yeah. I'm and excited so, to see what happens with it. But um, one thing more than just turning this into a giant restless commercial, I wanted to talk. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm okay with that Go too. Restless. Yeah. Buy some clothes. Yeah. Restless yeah. Clothing. Yeah. Dot com. Restless Clothing. Dot com at restless co on <laughs> Twitter and Instagram <laughs> and everywhere else. Uh, everything will be in the show notes yeah. too. Uh, but, uh, and eventually we'll have a commercial cut for the front of our show. So don't worry. Don't worry. You will, <laughs> you'll, you'll get all the, all the, <laughs> Restless, you can stand. But um, but the biggest reason that I wanted to bring it up is I wanted to talk a little bit about the process and some of the things we've learned in launching the brand this time around. You know, I'm actually really excited about how you're structuring it this time. Well, and Mike and I have been, I mean, really from the beginning of this show, we've tried to stay pretty transparent with what we're working on. And, well, I mean, outside of the fact he won't talk about his project. Yeah, that but, one's a little too... But outside of that, yeah. I mean, we've been, you know, pretty open with, you know, how we start a podcast, how we do it, what do we use to, you know, our equipment list we and use all these other things. for this, we use this yeah. mic. We you use know, this and so, yeah. you know, we're trying to be kind of transparent. I mean, the whole point of this show is to, to help people move their eggs along and and so I think it's important to get advice from people who are trying things and, and learning uh, new things as we go. And so I want to do the same with this Restless launch because we're doing something a little different than we did before. Um, now, granted, I mean, technology has come a long way in the last... Since before you, know, you since, started it last time, yeah. Yeah, when Restless was around the first time, I mean, we were still like hard coding, hard coding websites, you know. And, it, and that's not that long ago, really. I mean, it's four or five years ago. Hell, I'm still hard coding websites. Yeah, but, <laughs> but like, you know, for building an e-commerce site, I mean, our old store was just like a hand-built store yeah. that had, you know... With a PayPal... Like some kind of plug-in here for the button, store, yeah. yeah. And so... Um, you know, so we've come quite a ways since then, and I, so I just wanted to share a little bit of what we've gone through, a little bit of what we discovered, and and stuff like that along the way. So um, the biggest thing that's a, a revolution for uh, for Restless this time around is that we're primarily going to be web based. Last time uh, we you know pushed much harder to get into stores. Um, and maybe we'll end up going that direction again uh, at some point. But well, I think the problem with pushing hard to get in the stores is, A, you have the inventory initially, the upfront expense. The store has to buy a certain amount to make it worthwhile to get them the... Yeah, the, well, and everybody wants a discount and yeah. blah, blah, blah. And so, I mean, it, it, it getting into retail is, is difficult. And, you know, with modern technology and the internet and everything else, I mean, it's pretty easy to just run your online store, you yep. know, without the brick and mortar. Uh, build your presence online and uh, and do the whole thing, you know, sort of in cyberspace, which is uh, a pretty cool thing. Um, and so right now, that's that's where we're going to start. Um, you know, and like I said, maybe we'll we'll branch out down the road, but that's where we are now. So the first thing we we sort of set out to do was identify a you know e commerce platform, and there there are many of them. There's a lot of them out there. Um, we used to use one called uh, Store Envy. 
I think is it shop envy or store envy? store store envy I think, and uh, I'll double check and put it in the show notes. But um, it was a I don't know a little bit archaic. I'm sure they've come a long way since we used them, but um, they were you know an okay place. They were kind of in the uh, in the realm of like an Etsy, right? Okay, it's a, yeah. a little more home craft, not real. I like Etsy. I bought that that clock out there on my wall is from Etsy. Yeah. It's from like the UK. It took a month and a half to get. Here. <laughs> Well, and so I think, you know, depending on what your product or service is, you, you choose the right platform for it. You yeah. know, so Etsy's really great is in terms of being like an artist community and where people, you know, make If you're looking go. for the handcrafted kind of. Right. Yeah. And so where this is more of a, a wide scale or mass market kind of product, uh, we decided to uh, use Shopify. Now, Shopify is something that we've looked at for a long time. Uh, in the past, I've always been cheap and tried to use cheap or free versions of, of different e-commerce platforms. And, and don't get me wrong, there are a bunch out there that are still pretty decent that yeah. you can get that are low cost or no cost. And, uh, you know, or you can even use plugins and WordPress and things like that. I mean, there's ways to do this cheaper. But um, I had long heard from a lot of people that Shopify was a great e-commerce platform. And uh, I, in fact, have had other cli- you know, clients in my business uh, asked me about integrating their their product in in Shopify stores and things like that, and I just I never had any experience with it before. So with Restless this time around, we wanted to use uh, Shopify and see if it sort of lived up to the hype. Well, it, it's you know you're testing your own product with their services, so that way you know any client that comes in the future, you can you have firsthand experience and you're not learning on their product right which is cool and yeah i mean you know in terms of from business business perspective this gives us some more experience working with e-commerce and and shopify's platform specifically that we can yeah parlay back into a product we can sell but um for purposes of restless we also just sort of we looked at a bunch of different platforms and decided to go with this one um we pay something like 75 bucks a month so it's it's kind of expensive there's a kind of a big barrier to entry but i think that there are some real valuable things that they do uh, in terms of marketing and plugins that you can add on to your site and things like that 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 make it worth the money. Well, just you were showing me the other day that you can post a picture of your hat, for example, on Instagram, and they can literally just click on the Instagram picture and buy it here. Well, it's kind of it's you know the gift and the curse of so many things online being so incestuous, right? <laughs> um, yeah. So Shopify, I, I don't know if they have any relationship with Facebook or not, um, but they are tightly integrated to the point where you can basically once you built your store in Shopify, you can publish to other platforms. So I can sell through Amazon, I can sell through Facebook, I can sell through a number of different channels just right from my Shopify platform, which well, is really cool. All probably through APIs and just plugins that yeah, they yeah. make available. Yep, that's yeah. what it is. And and it's it's pretty slick, right? Because you can open yourself up to, you know, dozens of different channels and you know, market your product across a, a number of different places. And so one of the integrations I did was with Facebook. So if you go to facebook.com slash restless clothing, <laughs> uh, you can see there uh, that there's a, a shop now button or something to that effect, a shop button. And, uh, you know, when you click that, you can see basically the same catalog of products that you can see on Shopify or, well, at restlessclothing.com. And um, buy it right there. And, and yeah, and literally buy it with your one click settings on Facebook, or, you know, it'll, it'll take you through an e commerce funnel, uh, which is really, you know, a pretty slick integration. Well, so to take that one step further, they have, you know, shop or uh, Facebook is, is the owner of Instagram, and Instagram is basically our number one social media platform. Yeah. We, Likewise, we, that's yeah, pretty much the main one I use. Yeah, we syndicate to others, and maybe others are better, like Twitter and things like that. But but generally, uh, Instagram is just the one we like. Well, so the reason the I, I like it more than any is because it, it, I'm a man of few words. I don't like to talk that much, <laughs> so I'll just take a picture or something and say word, and then yeah. Play, you know? <laughs> yeah. And so so we use Instagram, and I think for you know for any fashion brand or whatever, it's cool to show your gear yeah. and environment. And well, stuff and like it updates that. to just, Twitter and Facebook too, so yeah. I'm getting all three with one. Or, you know yeah so anyway so we put the lion's share of our effort into instagram and uh you know and into our facebook page and so by publishing or syndicating our our shopify store with facebook uh it also opened up a channel for us to be able to market to instagram 
And so, and what's really cool about it is like what Mike just mentioned, and this is a new feature of Instagram. They've just rolled it out in the last month or two. But um, you can, we can publish a, an image, for example, a picture of a T-shirt or something, and we can basically tag it with a product in our Facebook store. And because of Instagram and Facebook's integration, uh, you know, it's a really simple connection. Yeah, and uh, well, and Shopify basically facilitates. You were showing for it to you. me yesterday, and essentially the image on Instagram, as you look at it, if you look for like a second and a half, two seconds, a little white dot shows up, right? Yep. You click on that, and then you can. It gives you an option to buy it now. Yeah. So, and you can literally just buy it. Then it pops up a little card that's, I guess, connected to the Facebook store. And uh, and you can literally just buy it. Just click. Done. That, that's ordered. awesome. And, uh, and it's super cool. So for anybody selling a product or whatever, it's a, a really cool setup. And it's just, you know, it doesn't cost anything extra. It's just part of your Shopify connection or setup. And I'm sure that you can set this up outside of Shopify by just setting up a Facebook store. Yeah. But Shopify did make it really easy to, uh, to connect to all those dots. You know, like you just click the button that says integrate with Facebook and log in and you're done. And then you do the same. You submit your store to Instagram. Uh, there's a two or three day uh, approval process. And then once they approve your store, you're in business and you can start doing that. Now, some of the other fun things that you see on Instagram were like uh, you can swipe up to to purchase or swipe up to visit a website or whatever. That stuff comes along after you have 10,000 followers. Oh, or, really? Or if you're a, a verified account. See, that's the thing is they have no way to submit your stuff to be verified. Like yeah. you literally have to just be that popular where you, now you're verified. Yeah, and I mean, I can see arguments for doing it that way, but um, but it's kind of frustrating, at least like for me, you know, because we don't, you know, you know we don't, we're not to 10,000 followers yet. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and uh, we could use all your support to get there. Yeah, go like us. <laughs> yeah. So Instagram uh, Instagram dot com slash restless co uh, <laughs> or the egg show or any of us because we could all use the love. Yeah. But um, but we you know it, it's that's kind of a, a barrier that's difficult to cross. You know, I mean it's not easy to come up with ten thousand followers, uh, especially ten thousand quality followers, and um, and so it's. Uh, always kind of a, a struggle because we were limited to what features we have access to by our audience. Yeah. However, we might be able to grow our audience if we had those features. So it's kind of, kind of a double. Well, I, I think you, you hit a threshold, you know, once you start, you know, getting to that point where you're getting the traction, then the, you know, you're going to start see, noticing the difference, you know, it, yep. it's, yeah. It's well, great. and that's the thing. I'm hopeful that, you know, as we were regaining momentum, you know, we're picking up where we left off years ago and now we're, you know, gathering steam with a whole new group of people, really a whole new audience for us. Um, you know, I, I suspect we'll start hitting some of these milestones, these 10,000 followers and things like that, you know, in the not too distant future. So as we, as we start doing that, uh, I'll be able to report more on on uh, that. Yeah. So anyway, the the only other stuff I wanted to say about Shopify is that they do allow you to have fully customized templates, things like that. Um, you know, you can take some built in templates and modify them to to suit your needs. Well, I've heard the plugins that they ha they have available are just insane. Yeah, like, there's a huge list of plugins. Anything you want to do, there's a plugin for it, which is awesome. But it, it also it kind of hamstrings you to you know like okay. I need this now. I have to pay this extra. Yeah, you know. and and I will say that that's kind of a bummer. Now I think the the cheapest Shopify plan I want to say is something like twenty five bucks, and uh, that one basically has most of the features of the seventy dollar or their two hundred dollar or whatever it is. Their their full uh, full suite. But like you're saying, you know, depending on what you want, it, it includes some basic analytics, integrations with things like MailChimp and different places like that for email but marketing. But then if you do the MailChimp, then you have to pay for MailChimp, and then it's yeah, like, and, and there's a lot of that. So yeah. so depending on what services you need, or or you know, if you're integrating some type of product or something that you're getting through a third party, you know, then each of those third parties integrates their fees and. You know, so you're not only paying Shopify the seventy nine bucks, but you're paying twenty bucks here and ten dollars there and five dollars there. You know, yeah, but and, if, and if so you can think start about it up. though, and and you know, seventy five bucks if you're selling, you know, enough to justify the expense every month, that's not a big deal. It's when you're, you know, paying seventy five bucks a month and maybe selling one shirt, that's when it starts. You know, yeah, and and it's a bit of a gamble, right? I mean, because you know, we we certainly don't know how Restless is going to go, and 
you know, if you figure out what that 79 bucks is by 12 months, you know, I mean, we've got to move some merch to cover the cost of that. Yeah. It's like almost a grand a year. Well, yeah. Because by the time you. It's almost as much as I spend on Starbucks. (laughs) Well, because by the time you you figure out, you know, your costs of products and all that other stuff, you know, to to be profitable, you got to cover these fees, too. And that just all means moving volume, you know. So and like with any startup or any new business, you know, you might have to gamble a little bit. Uh, but if you have a quality product and whatever, I mean, you do need to kind of give it time. Yeah. You know, so that would be my recommendation is, you know, go ahead and, and spring for Shopify. I think it's it's I think it's probably the best of the e-commerce platforms I have any experience with. Um, but it's also the more most expensive of any of the ones I've used. And so uh, I, I believe that the integration the analytics, the, you know, some of these different features and bells and whistles of the software are what makes it worth it. And so for me, I believe it's worth it, you know, but if we're not selling a shirt in six months, then, you know, we might have to reevaluate. Yeah. But really, if you look at the larger picture, if you're, if you haven't moved a shirt in six months, there's something wrong, then maybe it's not the store, maybe it's the product or, or whatever else, you know? So, I mean, You've got to give yourself enough time to fail, but if you if it's not working, you need to, to think critically about how to adjust. Well, it's not like you're just going to build this site and overnight it's going to take off and you're going to be an internet success. It's well, going to be the you continual know, work, the continual pushing, the continual you know like effort that you put into the Well, project. it's one of the things that I think kind of, I don't know, sort of sucks about the internet and about these online businesses and things like that is... Well, I guess it's a couple things. First of all, I think that this concept of the flash in the pan, get rich quick, whatever, I think that people have seen those stories or whatever, but I think they're they're not common. No. You know, and, and so people think, hey, you know, I'll put my website out there, you know, not realizing that they're one of a billion websites. And um, you know, because it's close to them or whatever, they expect some kind of instant result or, you know, well, you know, I only need a little percentage of, of internet traffic to discover me and we'll be huge, you know, but it's not just going to happen. You no, know? it's not just there. And, you know, and you can do a you lot for free and stuff but and get caught in the, in the social yeah, meme f- world. Find yourself a then, scandal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, uh, but anyway, I think that one of the biggest things you can do, and it's, it's the same with like a brick and mortar style business too, is nothing happens fast. Nothing is flash in the pan and nothing is overnight. Well, the cool part about this versus like a brick and mortar, for example, if you look at like a brick and mortar, your overhead just to get the doors open is 50 times more than what you've put in. Yeah, this just to keep the lights on, right? Yeah. And so, I mean, so there's some advantages there. Now, the advantage of brick and mortar might be maybe I'm in front of walk by traffic all day and the, those people walk by and see it. Yeah, but, but then if you don't pay attention to your demographic and what you're looking for, you could be in the wrong area and not realize it, mm-hmm. you know? Like, well, and that's the thing. I mean, you know, you've got to tailor it to your product. Location, and, location, location. Yeah, and I think, you know, with a with a brand like this, I mean, obviously there is a lot of, you know, clothing that gets bought in clothing stores. So, I mean, there's definitely a place for that. But I think now more than ever, uh, you know, shopping online is so commonplace now that I think, you know, many people just that's how, where they live. Yeah, you know? I, I have mixed feelings about it because I see – these awesome t-shirts. I'm like, dude, I would totally rock that. And when it gets here, it's poorly printed. It's, uh, you know, it's doesn't fit right. I bought one the other day. It was like a computer, an old school Apple computer. And it had a little pop-up window in it that said, hello world. Cause hello world is usually the first program that anyone ever writes in a, in a computer language. Um, whatever. It's kind of an inside joke. So I bought this shirt thinking it's, you know, funny. And when I got it, the sleeves were too tight. The neckline was up on my chin and it was just like you, you can never trust sizes well maybe that's on you for having the wrong body type yeah i'm just a <laughs> <laughs> i think that t-shirt company is body shaming you. Yes. how dare they <laughs> so anyway i mean you know of course you can really get into the minutia on this but the other point i wanted to make too about um just the the you know shitty part of the internet or and maybe it's a business in general is this perception of, you know, flash, like get rich quick or this idea, you know, that stuff happens quickly or overnight, even with these tech companies that blow up and become the unicorns and things like that. Like the part you're not seeing is the five years they spent developing the countless idea. hours that they spent yeah. learning how to do one thing just to be able to do the next. You yeah. Know? I mean, you know, so there are businesses that hit and appear to, you know, blow up overnight or whatever, but it, they almost never happen without all that leg work and everything else happening first. Well, usually it's like the third or fourth iteration of the thing that they tried the first time that finally takes off. Yeah. Like it, 
the guy we were going to interview. Um, yeah, it took three or four companies before yeah, he got the one, and he got the one, and now he's doing quite well. Yeah, and so and I, and I think that that's good, just to to you know set realistic expectations because I think that it's easy to think that, hey, just by hanging out my shingle online, by rolling out my Shopify store, we're just going to blow up. Like, it's, you know, they're just waiting for me to show up with my store to start buying it, yeah. you know. And uh, when the reality is, it's just like any business, you know, it takes a little time to develop some traction and things like that, you know. And we were lucky with Restless that we have some old school fans and people who hung out back in the day and stuff. So, you know, we've got a little bit of a, an army that can well, sort of it's speak funny to if us. I, if I rock a restless shirt in Pocatello, usually some, someone says something like, man, I haven't seen those guys in a minute. Where are they? You know, like, yeah, well, and uh, even just the other day, I ran into a guy at Starbucks while I was, have been up here working. And, uh, you know, he was like an old school fan. He used to support us back in the day, you know, and he was just thrilled that we we're back in business and that things are going again. Cause he always supported us, you know? And so it's, you know, it's cool that we have that, you know, we're not starting at zero, zero. But, you know, we are definitely hitting up a new market and trying to market a new way to new people. And uh, and so, I don't know. So, anyway, it's a grand experiment. It'll be a lot of fun. Uh, it'll be a lot more fun if all of our listeners go out and buy a shirt. Yeah, go buy a shirt. And uh, and we do have a uh, promo code at the eggs or at uh, restlessclothing.com. Uh, I, I believe it's just eggs show. And that'll get you 15% off or something like that. So, uh, I'll put it in the show notes, though, so that you guys can... Uh, Take advantage. Man, I need to start taking notes of what you're going to put in the show notes. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I think we've got a long established uh, record of saying we'll put it in the show notes and never, and never putting it. it in the notes. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I think people, Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, I think folks are probably used yeah. to it. Anyway, so I will say, too, that one thing I'm kind of excited for and uh, is that so we've rolled out basically mostly men's clothing. I mean, obviously, I, I'm a guy. I know how to best design for men. Yeah. Uh, we've got a couple women's shirts, but they're basically just, you know, women's versions of, of the men's designs or the sort of the unisex well, aren't designs. You, aren't you going on a trip this weekend? To do yeah. The- and so, but this week, yeah, in fact, tomorrow, uh, which will be Thursday, the day this show airs, um, I'm taking off to California, going down to LA and I've got a long time buddy who, uh, Is this Curtis. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, he's been my friend since like sixth grade. And, uh, but he's basically lived and breathed the fashion industry since then. Like, I mean, he, he's worked, well, he's for, worked in some big jobs. Yeah. He's worked for a number of different companies doing everything from designing stores and merchandising and well, all, he, all kinds of stuff. He, they actually send him out to the, the storefronts to do the, the layout of, okay, you were going to put this. Yeah. He would design gonna, the windows yeah. and the, the, you know, do all the merchandising and all that stuff. And so, um, so I won't say who he's working for or anything like that just because i don't want to mess anything up for him but um but we're going to spend a little bit of time this weekend and he's much more in tune with uh women's fashion and what's hot and what isn't and stuff like that and so he's going to help me kind of craft a women's line specifically for women That's versus awesome. well i'm kind of excited for it honestly because like the way that we did it in the past i mean we had some women's stuff but like we didn't talk to a lot of women we just no. made shirts that we thought you know were feminine or would look hot on a chick but but not, you know, from the perspective of somebody who really knows women's fashion. And yeah. so I'm, I'm really anxious to work with him or not anxious, but excited to work with him and uh, and see if we can put together a, a line that will, you know, really resonate with women and actually be something they care about. Do you have like a an idea of how many designs you want to do? Or? I imagine we'll treat it a little bit like our, our spring launch. So we rolled out something like six or seven new styles in addition to some old like uh, OG styles from back in the day. And, uh, you know, so we'll probably start with something like that. Um, we talked about doing some things like leggings and some other stuff like that just to kind of round out the collection and stuff. So so we'll see. Um, cool. You know, and basically I'm going to be leaning on him a little bit for advice because I just I don't know that industry as well as I need to. And uh, in order to sort of. Well, it's a new frontier for you. you well, know, like, I mean, when when you did, you know, your product line back in the day, you were f- focusing specifically on the MMA world. And that right there cuts your women demographic in half. Yeah. Well, and know? the designs that we made for women were well received and stuff. The the ladies liked them and everything. But I think. But you're it, also were designing specifically with MMA. Yeah, it was mind. kind of self-fulfilling. You know? Right. And so now where we're trying to hit a broader just sort of streetwear audience you know, it's, it's a different thing altogether, you know, and I don't think it's a a good idea to make assumptions about what women would like or what they'll wear. I think it's better to actually know what they're going to like and what they're going to wear. And asking someone in the industry that's working with a major 
company that does women's fashion. Yeah. So anyway, so I'm really excited about that. I think it'll be good to have some time with him and, and try and work through this and hopefully we'll uh, come up with something that bears some real fruit. So then you're you're going from there. You're going to be there for what, like three days, four uh, days? Yeah, I'll be there this coming Thursday through Sunday and then I come back to Salt Lake for like an afternoon, long enough to get my hair cut. Hey and wife, then, nice to see you again. Yeah, and then, uh, <laughs> and then Monday morning I leave to New York for a week. So we'll be out in New York City uh, th- until the following Saturday uh, on just business business on my uh, design company business, and so uh, so that'll be really cool too. Uh, I had a, a great time last uh, last time I was in New York, and unfortunately, uh, all the people well I lo- the lion's share of the people I know in New York are going to the Creative South oh, yeah. conference it's, that we've been talking about and promoting for months and and stuff. It's and, funny you're going to be up there while everyone's down there, yeah. and then I'm going to be in Seattle. You know, because in, initially we were talking about going there, yeah, and we just it, our schedules are just too too yeah. hectic, and so it, it just kills me because I was really looking forward to going and and being able to see all these guys, and then yeah, now I'm I'm stuck. Well, not stuck because it's going to be cool, but I mean, I'm going to New York in the exact same time period as Creative South, and so unfortunately, you know, I don't get to go. Well, at least and a lot of the folks I know from New York are going, so yeah. <laughs> so unfortunately, I won't know that many people up there. So anyway, it's a it's a bummer, but uh, for anybody who hears this. Uh, you'll hear it in time to uh, to still get out to Creative South, and uh, if you can go, uh, go. It will definitely be worth it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing some photos and hearing some stories about it. Um, I really wish I could have gone. Yeah, well, we'll try and make a point to to do it next year, and we'll see if we can maybe get somebody from uh, Creative South on to give us a little recap or whatever at some point. Yeah, that'd be good. So, uh, so anyway. The last thing um, that I wanted to try and get into a little bit, um, and it's just kind of a quick thing, but it's something kind of cool, I thought. It was, uh, so I don't know, I guess it was a year and a half ago or whatever when I was doing a bunch of work out in Boston. I I had been just, you know, I was out there by myself. I was bored. I was, you know, Surfing looking the for stuff to do. Much. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and I had come across this 23andMe again. Now, for people who don't know, 23andMe is this. DNA test thing that you can use to, you know, find out where your uh, genetic heritage is from and, you know, some predispositions to disease or illness or whatever. I, I mean, you know, it's just kind of a, I mean, it's really more for funds. What do they do? You just, uh, you, you spit in a cup and yeah, mail it you, in kind Yeah, of you thing. spit in a tube and send it off to them and then they, they come back with some results. They affirm that your hair is dark or your, <laughs> your eyes are blue and, yeah. and you go, oh, okay, well, cool. That's cool. So anyway, so I bought that thing kind of for fun while I was in Boston a couple of years ago and uh, it uh, was kind of a fun thing to do and do Something they, they give you a broke breakdown of like, well, you come from Germany and like you're yeah, and uh, and it, you know it was something I had wanted to do for a long time, but I never thought to spring for it. You know, it's a little bit expensive, a couple hundred bucks or something. Yeah, it's like two hundred. And uh, and so, but while I was bored in Boston, I, I finally pulled the trigger to do it. And so I bought this thing and I, I did the spit in the cup thing and sent it off. And yeah, you get a a series of results. You know, it, it sort of breaks down your genetic your gene pool. And sort of, you know, breaks down where you're from, where your ancestors are from, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it affirmed for me that I could not be more white and European, <laughs> which was not uh, not a, gr- a big surprise. But uh, there were a couple of fun little facts in there. Like there's a little bit of my genetic background that is from is uh, Ashkenazi Jew. Oh, really? Which is kind of a, an interesting thing. And then there's a, a little little tiny snippet from a little island off the coast of Italy, uh, a place called Sardinia. You got some and mob so, influence back yeah, there. Yeah, there's something know? going on. So, I mean, they're teeny little portions, but they were some of the you know uh, outliers in my genetic code. So, anyway, I was talking about it the other day with this guy I work with, and he had had let me in on or told me about this thing he'd heard about on Joe Rogan's show. Um they he has a, a guest on pretty regularly. Her name's Dr. Rhonda Dr. Rhonda Patrick. And she, you know, is this brilliant woman, comes on, talks about a, a range of things to do with, you know, fitness and health and, and yeah, all Yeah, I've heard stuff. a few of her episodes. It's actually really Yeah, really interesting. interesting and episodes. and I believe she's got her own podcast and stuff too. So I mean you can you can look her up. Um but this guy was telling me, he's like, you know, Rhonda Patrick has this thing uh, called Found My Fitness. And what it does is it somehow integrates with 23andMe's data, with the data they collect uh, using your genetics. 
and she breaks down like all this information on you know the well i guess gives you a little bit deeper dive on your genetics so so instead of just saying hey you you're norwegian they yeah. they look at stuff so 23 like, and me when i first caught wind of 23 and me years ago um, they were allowed to give you kind of like health reports, like you know. So when when you did your genetic screening, if you were you know predisposed to se- cancer, cancer or, or yeah. whatever, uh, you would find you could find out about that. They would publish a report that would tell you about that stuff. But and they, at some they, point, they don't break it down very well. Do well they? at some point, the FDA stepped in and said, "Hey, you're not allowed to give medical advice." And so they they basically well, how is that advice? It's just given a breakdown of your yeah, well, body. Yeah, like, it's your genetics. I don't I don't understand. And the, the reasoning behind it, because I mean, as long as it's your genetics and you're giving consent, but why shouldn't you have every right to know about and then be able to whatever. take it to an actual doctor who can give you recommendations? Yeah. So and that so, just makes sense. yeah, so the folks at 23andMe have been fighting for years to get back some of those uh, abilities, and they have been able to over the last few years, but uh, publish a few more reports and you know give some some additional background. But I mean. They have your genetic sequence, you know. They they know lots about you, and you know you should have a right to to hear about it. Uh, however, you just you can't right now through them. Um, you can see a number of things, and it's really cool and really interesting, and I think it's w- well worth doing. Um, but this thing with with Dr. Rhonda Patrick, this uh, uh, system that she's got going on, this thing found my fitness. Um, Basically, you interface her system with uh, the 23andMe system. You know, you log in and give permissions or whatever. And then she does a much deeper dive on your uh, your genetics and calls out markers. And what I love about it, and this I think is, is even cooler than like what 23andMe does with it, where, you know, they'll say, hey, you're predisposed to this thing. And that's kind of all they'll tell you. Yeah. Uh, so the you, found my you fitness have an issue with this, but they don't tell you how to fix it. Yeah, the found my fitness uh, report that I, I got basically provides not just what the problem is, but some possible ways to work around it or to work with it. Huh. And that little bit of action step, uh, I think, is wildly valuable. And that's why I wanted to bring this up today, is just because I think it's a really cool thing. And what's what's maybe even the cooler thing about it is it cost me ten bucks. Really? So basically, she's trying to put together. It looks like they're trying to raise money for this this system or this uh, you know uh, database or this collection of data that that she's doing, and you know just I mean it's a business. You know they got to make money, but they basically ask you for a donation as much as you want, but ten dollar minimum for their like full blast. And for ten dollars, that's for. nothing. No, no, it's nothing. Now you've already done the test. You know, in order to to get the test, you need to have done twenty three and Me. So you've paid them already. But this uh, to get this like really in depth report from uh, Dr. Rhonda Patrick at FoundMyFitness.com is uh, you know just ten ten dollars, and she actually has two reports on there that she'll give you for free. But if you want the really comprehensive one, it's ten bucks. It's kind of uh, like the dating app, so you can see the photo if you pay this much. <laughs> but if you actually want a date, <laughs> it's going to cost you a fortune. And so, but uh, but yeah, and so for me, it was well worth ten dollars, and well worth actually quite a bit more. Um, and, and you're welcome to uh, to donate as much as you like to their cause, uh, including they they have a Patreon and some other things for monthly support and things like that, just to basically keep things moving. Well, I was actually listening to an episode on Rogan the other day, and he was talking about how he's funded a hundred percent with just Patreon. Yeah, and that to me is interesting. Yeah, it's really cool, and we've actually we've started dabbling with it for this show for eggs. I mean, do not, we have one set up? We have an account now. We haven't actually gone through and rigged it up so people can join us yet. Um, but it's turning into one of those platforms that people are using to try and raise money. And basically, what it does is it allows people to make a monthly contribution in exchange for monthly contribution. You give them something, you know, some behind the scenes access, or if you're a super hot chick, you give them all the not safe for work photos <laughs> or, you know, whatever it is. I mean, people are using it in a wide variety of ways, you know, where you can get the album, you know, six months ahead of everyone else. Well, or you I think, can get, I think we could do some cool stuff. I, I haven't, I literally haven't thought about what we could you know, give as a gift or anything like that, or even thought about the way to actually, well, like with this show, maybe it's early access to shows. Maybe it's some kind of archival something, you know, I mean, there's a number of different things you could do custom sticker here and there. Do like a, I can make a mix or something. And yeah, there's all kinds of stuff you can do, you know, and people can donate as little as a dollar or as much as you want. And, you know, it's just a way for people to support small indie things, you know, and basically buy into the things they care about, you know, whether it's a radio show or a clothing company or a, like Restless or yeah. <laughs> yeah, or whatever, you know. And so it's it's 
pretty cool. So anyway, but so uh, Dr. Patrick has this uh, has a Patreon account, has a number of different ways for collecting uh, donations. But I mean, it's really kind of all up to you, you know. It's and so if it's, you want to support it or not, yeah, yeah. So it's a really cool service. Now I will I will say, you know, and there's probably some lawyer freaking out that I, I don't have a good disclaimer for all this uh, this stuff. But you know, I mean, of course, you know, take whatever advice with a grain of salt. Talk to your doctor. Blah 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 blah. But um, what I really liked about the the comprehensive report, anyway, is that it provided actionable things to do to counteract some of the variants in your DNA. Now, just because you have a variant doesn't mean that it will ever manifest or whatever, you know. So, like, I had a couple in there that are like, "Oh, you might be more predisposed to celiacs than other people," or whatever. I I don't have celiacs. I I you know that's not something I've got. But um, some of the stuff know, that did. But really. because I have that gene, I'm yeah. susceptible to it. So here's some advice. You know, do this, 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 and this, and that will help you avoid activating your celiac. So gene. you can actually get an overview of like, okay, these are potential pitfalls in your health. If you do this versus this, you're going to have a better chance of avoiding. Yeah, like one of them for me too was something about increased re- risk of uh, heart disease or something. And it said that my blood type or my my gene uh, genetic makeup is more susceptible to I'm going to get this wrong, but, uh, you know, polysaturated fat versus unsaturated fat or something. Yeah. And so, you know, basically it said, you know, well, if you know, your body isn't going to react well if you eat these types of fats. Can so you, is this avoid something those you could take into like a nutritionist and be like, hey, OK, this is this is what this says. I don't know. And this is what I'll say is the the one pitfall. And I'm really new to this. Right. Like I, I literally just did this today. So maybe with some more research, I can answer my own question. But I wasn't easily able to find. So, yes, it gives you action steps and things like that, but a lot of the report is in in medical ease for sure. Yeah. So it's, you know, giving you really long, you know. So then you have to Google this word to figure out what it actually means. Well, that's means the thing. You're getting these, you know, tons of 25 cent words. And unless you have some sort of background in this, you know, it might be difficult to understand, you know, really what the problem is or you know, why is this an issue, (laughs) you know? And so what I was hoping to find and unable to find so far, so Dr. Rhonda Patrick, please tune in and and answer my question. We're going to tag you a lot. But what I would like to be able to do is reach out to her or her team and have some professional look at my, my results and then help me formulate a plan. So like, let's say I have three or four variants that might lead to more heart related conditions than others. And I don't know, uh, something that might lead to dementia or whatever like that will help me craft a diet or a exercise regimen or a whatever that sort of counters these things. So yeah, even what, though they're what giving supplements should I be taking to help? Out yeah. With so this, even though you know? they're giving you bit by bit advice, you know, so people with this variant can do this and sometimes that helps. You know, like look at the the collective of the variants or the collective of the the advice and then build like kind of a life plan to that. Because like I'm having a hard time analyzing all these different things and each one is asking for different things. Well, and, it's like if you go you to know, WebMD and say, hey, I've got a headache, you're going to die. Yeah, you know, right. Everything like, leads to death yeah. on WebMD. <laughs> and so, um, but yeah, so anyway, that would be my one suggestion with this, with this thing and uh, the found my fitness reporting is just this, uh, you know, after step. And I, and like, I mean, I would be stoked to pay for it. Like I would, I would happily pay, you know, Dr. Patrick or some other doctor to look at my list of problems and say, or look at, uh, at my list of variants, I guess, and say, okay, well, here's six lifestyle things that if you do this, it, you know, maybe, maybe it wouldn't negate, but maybe it would help. Well, weren't, weren't you saying that one of them was like, you know, your predisposition for X, so you need to get, you know, a full night's sleep. And that yeah. just by doing that. Yeah, I know. can't remember what it was, but yeah, it was like, it, it, maybe it was the short term memory one. Maybe that's why I can't remember. <laughs> anyway, there was a variant on there that said something like, I'm predisposed to some short term memory uh, things, which is probably why I say uh, all the time. Yeah. It's that short term memory. Because it takes up. a second for it to click in. Yeah, I don't have enough RAM. Yeah. <laughs> you need to upgrade your. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so. You've got 16 gigs, buddy. <laughs> but if I'm not mixing it up, I believe the, the feedback on that particular variant was something about getting a full night's sleep and blah, blah, blah. And, and if you do get enough sleep, then something in your spinal fluid, you know, can diffuse through your brain and clear out some of the plaque and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you know, a, a really simple fix, you know, just go to bed for God's sake. Yeah. And uh, I have the worst time with that, too. Yeah. And, and I mean, you know, I work a lot. I work a couple jobs. I'm trying to write it, get all these companies going and, and all this stuff. And it's like, 
how am I supposed to go to sleep? But if going to sleep makes it so I don't say uh every other word, then it's totally worth doing. Yeah. And so, okay, so I just need to go to bed at 10, but I'll get up a little earlier. Or, you know, I'll make sure that my day is a little optimized so I'm a little bit more efficient. Or, See, you know, figure it out. But I mean, but good practical advice, you know, on the what to do with this massive report would be really great. Yeah. And, and maybe that exists. Um, I was looking for p- ways and stuff to contact Dr. Patrick, and I'm sure she would get uh, bombarded with questions like this all the time. So maybe that's why it's not readily available how to contact her. But I would really like uh, some sort of follow-up on that and see if there's a way to take this report now that I have it and how do I put it into action. Yeah, that'd be definitely interesting to see and see it you know over the course of a year and a half and see if it actually made yeah. a difference you know? yeah well because like i say i mean you know just because you have a variant doesn't mean you'll actually get whatever it says you know like i may have a variant for alzheimer's but i may never get alzheimer's or oh, if i do like the, or if i do i'll forget the dude that smokes and drinks for 100 years and lives to be 103 how yeah. did he live yeah you know i mean know? this isn't like concrete science you know it's it just is saying you know maybe it's allowing you to hedge your bets a little bit you, yeah you know like i mean if 10 of your 15 variants all lead towards heart problems well then by all means let's see what you can do to solve those heart problems yeah if you know if it's memory issues or whatever else it is then why not what what harm is there in chasing down you know some uh some help on that kind of stuff well and you know like for me i you know i i'll stay up until six in the morning but i think i still get my full eight hours of sleep i mean hell you woke me up this afternoon (laughs) you know and I'm, i'm wondering if you know like having like a shift where you're working mostly nights, if that would have a, you know, if that has a down. Yeah, I'm sure it throws off rhythms and things like that, you know? And so, and, and the problem nowadays, especially is just that, advice is everywhere yeah you know and everyone's got a different opinion well or, and yeah. you know this is a downfall of the internet too as long as we're talking about those things is it's pretty easy to look reputable yeah you know so even if you are selling bad advice or snake oil or whatever <laughs> um you know it can uh it, it can be made to look reputable enough well that's that fake you can, news bro yeah right yeah that you can uh that you could convince people that you know to go one direction when really they should be going another and you know well and, and on that note i mean if you look at just even in the 90s the food pyramid was completely messed up yeah. i mean they would put a huge priority on grains and all this stuff that really you know in yeah. hindsight 2020 it makes zero sense and now it seems that yeah most science is sort of bearing out that it's almost the opposite mm-hmm. of what the food pyramid well, was all the sugars stuff. and the you know i mean yeah. it's horrible for you yeah and so it's uh you know and there's you know all the conspiracy theories and everything else as to why that was what it was but whatever it was you know i mean science is definitely helping us solve those problems well and that's the cool part about it is now you can actually look at data and you can actually do your own research and come to your own conclusion the the yeah. thing is though is you have to do the, the research and figure it out on your own and yeah. pay attention to it. You yeah. Know? Well, and that's the, the good news, right? Is, is now more than ever, it's easy to find this kind of stuff. And, uh, and I think, you know, this genetic testing is going to be a tool of the future. You know, maybe it won't be, you know, the be all end all. Maybe we'll find some other ways. But I mean, this is definitely a great step. Yeah. And, uh, and so anyway, based on, on my, you know, six hours of experience with the found my fitness, uh, platform, uh, I think it's definitely worth doing. So if you've done 23 and me, definitely take advantage of this and spend the 10 bucks and do it. I yeah. did an- ancestry.com. Like it was a Christmas present to me from my mom. And I was kind of like, uh, okay. I feel like she should know where you're from. She, you know, she being does. that she's your mother and all. She knows <laughs> so much about everyone in the family and they're like, I, like it's funny because the genetic makeup between me and my sisters is completely different. Oh, that's and interesting. That, and that's strange. Like I got more of my dad's side and you know, whatever, but like it, it's, it's weird to, um, look at like just the difference between my sister's kids and me because there's such a huge difference based on just the one change in her husband, you know, right. and what that one change does to affect, you know, and I'm not really into ancestry stuff. I kind of, you know, it's, it's big in the, the LDS church. So that's why my mom is all about it. But 
we didn't get the I, when twenty three and me. I guess is more based on your lifestyle versus your ancestry. Like where well, you come it's, from. Well, it's it's both. I mean, you know, so like for me, I mean, or probably really the lion share is breaking down your genetics of where you're from, who who you know what what your see. I was thinking is. I'm just going to be put on some sort of list, and now if I kill someone, they got my DNA. You know? <laughs> yeah, well, that's probably true. Also, yeah. I don't think they're mutually exclusive, Darn. but could, could be both. <laughs> Can't but, get away um, anymore. But yeah, no. Anyway, I think it, it's really worth doing. I think Dr. Rhonda Patrick and her her group at FoundMyFitness.com are doing a really good job. Uh, you know, helping people dig a little bit deeper into their genetic makeup and uh, and giving some good actionable advice. So I really like that. Um, as I mentioned, I'd like to take it maybe a step further, as I assume a lot of people would, because that would be sort of the logical next step. Yeah. But it's very affordable. It's very worthwhile. So I would say go check it out. Go contribute to her cause and uh, and give what you can give. Uh, it's it's definitely worth doing. Well, I guess you know we're getting close to that hour mark. Um, you're you're leaving tonight, and you're flying out tomorrow yeah. to L.A. You're going to do the women's line. You're going to be in New York for a week. I'm Is also going to be working from a beach for a couple of days, so I'm looking forward to that. Oh, it's nice. been cold out here in Idaho. I don't know, man. It's still kind of early in the summer. It it's true, be. but I imagine they've got more sun than we've got here, at least Lord willing. And the, the uh, day the day I got into Seattle was great weather, and it was nice to just be in Anacortes with it sunny because there's something that, like – it rejuvenates you to be in, oh, you know, yeah. so I can. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, well, and that was, I mean, really what started this whole thing to California is I, I'm super uh, susceptible to like crappy weather and the seasonal affective disorder and all that crap, even though it's, I don't know, feels like kind of just hacky nonsense to say it's a disorder, but, but I man, I just, I definitely um, react bad when the, when the weather's gross for like a while. I think that was like a deterrent factor for Seattle for a long time was everyone was like, Hey, it's, it's overcast nine months out of the year. You don't want to yeah. go there. Well, in Seattle, when it's sunny and beautiful is the coolest place. Well, ever. that's why I tell everyone is like when, but, when you get the month of good weather, that one month makes up for the 10 months of shit. Yeah. And it, it yeah. does. Well, and so, but for that reason, I've always been sort of drawn to California. I have a lot of friends and stuff down there. And so, you know, I like to go down there anyway, but just getting a break from the winter and, and really honestly, our, our winter hasn't been that bad this year. It's been pretty mild, but I, uh, after two weeks of crappy weather, cold and rain and snow and everything else, I, uh, I freaked out and I was just like, I called my wife. I was like, I'm quitting everything I'm doing. I'm done. I, I, She's like, let's yeah, take a step I, back. I'm not doing Chill anything. Up. She's like, okay, you got to get off the ledge. Why don't you go to California? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, uh, I jumped on online. I uh, got on my Delta thing and I booked my flight and I'm out of here. So, well, um, anyway, so I'll spend this week working from Cali and I think that'll be great. End of May, you should see if you can take some time off. Um, May 24th through the 26th, I'm going to be in uh, Phoenix playing at uh, Dos Gringos in Mesa and Dos Gringos in uh, Chandler. And then I'm doing a pool party in Litchfield Park uh, at the Wigwam, Wigwam Resort. Uh, so if you can make it out, it shouldn't be a fun weekend. Yeah, that would There's be great. Weather. Yeah, for sure. Right. In May in Arizona, it's not quite a thousand not degrees, quite but 180 it's on the way yet, but it's, <laughs> it, it, <laughs> so it'll be beautiful. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So check that out. Um, just to kind of, to put a pin in this show, check out, uh, all of Mike's dates. Uh, there's a bunch going on on his website, just DJ You can see everything you need to know. Uh, make sure you're following uh, the Eggs Show at uh, eggscast.com or at eight, at its eggs on uh, or no shit. <laughs> Had it. When am I going to get this right? Yeah, I need the list. We, well, the problem is, is we couldn't get all of them to be the same. Yeah, right. So it's like so, you got to remember one's Twitter, one's Instagram. So yeah. it's at Eggs Show on Twitter and Instagram. And uh, yep. uh, eggscast.com for everything else. Yep. And everything about me, you can find at r2mg.com. Follow us on Twitter, r2mg, or at r2media group on Instagram. And uh, I think with that, Mike, unless you've got anything else, no, call, I think call it a day. We're good. All right. With that, uh, we'll see you all next week. Have a good one. Later. <laughs>